Every number one dad mug now changes every day to show the actual rankings of dads around the world. Why does your dad deserve the number one spot? My dad worked hard after decades to give us the life we live. He slept 3 hours a day for 20 years just for his children. He worked at a hospital at day and at night. He went to work if they called him don't matter when it was. My dad is my hero in this case. My father's as lazy as they come during my childhood so your type of story will always have an impact to me. I'm currently 30 and striving hard to have a different path and lift myself from poverty. If I can be half as hardworking and dedicated as your dad in the next years of my life as a family man, then I can be assured that I have led a purposeful life. Bio dad equals doesn't deserve it, yet did an okay job where he could. Lots of ups and downs but we're really good friends these days. Stepfather equals 100% deserves it. Dude came into my mother's life when I was almost 10. I was a little crap then, and he tried his very best. As a teen my bio dad told me I didn't have to listen to my stepdad, so I treated him like total crap, when all he was trying to do was make sure I was doing my best in life. He put up with all my bulls all while already having a fully grown daughter from a previous marriage and having my sister with my mother not long after they got together as well. Dude is a son for trying to get some stupid butt white boy to just be calm and do the very best I can in life. He's a huge black dude from Jamaica who had life 10 times harder than I ever did, and didn't have to sit there taking crap from me almost daily, but he did because he loves my mother. I'm now 32, and have a wife and child of my own now, and have since openly apologized to him for giving him such a hard time when I was a kid, and we're really close as a family now. Comma I'm now 32 and have a wife child of my own now. Holop. My dad always made fun of me watching anime when I was around 14. I didn't really watch that much but it probably just stood out to him. One day, he had a meeting in the big city closest to where I live and on his way back to the train station. He walked past this huge comic and manga themed store which had a lot of posters of different anime in their store window. He knew I wanted to decorate the walls of my room and so he walked straight into the store and asked an employee to help him find a poster I liked. He had no clue which anime I had watched and so the employee recommended one of Naruto since a lot of people watching anime knew it. He came home with the poster and showed it to me. I never watched Naruto but the proud look on his face and the fact that he stood in this store and sieged for an anime poster for me even though he always made fun of it, made me put it in the middle of the wall in my room. And there it still is even though I stopped watching anime some time ago. This Christmas he did a similar thing. He went into my favorite store to get me a cup. He always went somewhere else when I went there with my mother but like with the poster. He went in and asked the employee to help him. The cup he got me is gothic themed and a bit corny but it has been my favorite to drink my tea from since I got it. The fact that he puts so much thought in those little gifts even though he doesn't share my love for the subject shows me how much I mean to him. What anime did you watch? During my entire childhood. My father dedicated the significant majority of the money to our primary education, my brother and I. I remember long discussions between him and my mom regarding the lack of money for food and clothes. He always stated, first, the boy's education, the rest we will figure out later. A few times we had to count on donations for basic stuff like furniture, clothes and even food sometimes. Because of his effort, we got a high quality education who helped both of us to join a public university. Today, we all have a better life because of his effort. We escape poverty just because he held it tight. We are the only ones in our entire family. He is also responsible for our strong reading habit. He always found a way to give us the opportunity to read books and comics. Because of him, today I'm pretty sure that quality education is the best way to change the world. P.S. We live in Brazil, where the primary public education is not that good, and most of the opportunities in public universities are for those who have money and time to prepare for the tests. As someone else said, he doesn't. But he doesn't have to be. He's still a good dad, but he's also a human who's made mistakes, up to and including in his parenting. And I love him anyway and forgive him for anything he's done wrong. Just like he loves me and forgives me for all the things I've done wrong. He's freaking awesome. He's probably the strongest person I know, and has sacrificed a ton to give my mother and me the best possible life. He's human and has his flaws, but character wise, he really is what I think a family man should be. I'm gonna go call him now. 
When I came out, I was afraid of what my dad would do. He's always been a pretty soft-spoken, strong, and capable guy. Your stereotypical heteromasculine dude. I wasn't too worried about my mom cause she was always pretty forgiving. But my dad can be kind of severe sometimes. I came out to them right before I went to school and practically ran down the street to catch the bus. It was so awkward. My mom had caught me with my high school BF the afternoon before. Nothing graphic. Just cuddling and watching movies after school. And I felt like it was this inevitability I had to get out of the way. When I got home from school that day I was so freaked out. My dad's car was in the driveway. He'd come home early from work. I thought I was gonna cry when he was waiting for me and told me we were gonna go for a drive. I seriously wondered if he was gonna hurt me for a bit. After we drove in silence for a while, he told me that he loved me. Then he said he was proud of me and the man I was becoming. He said he was proud of me for being honest about who I am. This actually did make me cry. Cause like I said, my dad is really soft spoken and rarely says stuff he doesn't truly mean. Then we went and got McDonald's hamburgers and ate them at the park like he used to do with me when I was little. I have an awesome dad. Your dad is a real man. Well despite having doubts that I was his biological kid he stuck around to raise me and took me in after my parents divorced. And it turns out I'm not his bio kid but he's still there. Your father is incredible. True meaning of a dad right there. Because when my grades were very bad and while seeing the result I can see in his eyes he hoped for better but didn't say a word. I was super upset after that and he saw me and asked why is your face so down. I told him about the obvious and he said chill. Don't be sad it was just a test. Try getting better next time. This incident always makes my eyes moist even after 8 years. This weekend we were talking about doing the right thing. And how his dad had failed to do so in a major way. He was a lawyer for the church and let the child sex abuse be covered up. My dad just saw spotlight and it was really affecting him. Anyway, we were talking about it. And the phrase is this the hill you want to die on came up. And dad said, either you die on that hill or a part of you dies. And in that moment I realized how lucky I am that my dad always does the right thing. He's a guardian ad litem, part time kindergarten teacher, and a farmer. He is supposed to be retired. His whole life is helping other people. If I can just be like my dad, I'm on the right path. He's there for me when I need him. He'll help me with all my technology troubles and stuff. He's also really cool and chill. I appreciate him a lot. I'm impressed that there's a dad here helping his kid with tech. In my experience it's usually the other way around. I was born with a congenital heart condition. The doctors told my parents that I probably wouldn't make it and that I would need surgery. Because I was a newborn and in intensive care my big sister wasn't allowed to come and see me. She had to stay with my grandparents. So while I was hooked up to the ventilator and unconscious my dad took the time to draw me. He spent about an hour at it and brought it to my sister so that she could meet me. I still have that drawing and I will keep it forever. Because he's my friend. I can laugh with him. I can have a good talk with him. We do things together we like and he supports me. Even though his father died when my dad was 7 and he never had a good connection with his stepdad we still have a very good connection. RM job Steve. My father deserved to be number because he raised me and my sister by himself. My mother died when I was 7 and ever since then, my father did everything for us. He woke us up in the morning, prepared our lunch boxes, made us breakfast while thinking about what to cook for dinner. After we go to school, he would go to work and earn money for the family. He never complained. He was very quiet about his own problems, his own health. He made sure my sister and I got all the care we need even after we graduated college. But when asked about marrying again, he would often tell people that his salary is not enough for the three of us already so why add another person to feed. I thought he was just joking but he never remarried. Even now when he got his pension, he wanted to use his money for us. We were so lucky to have him as my father and he will always be number one. My dad has been the most patient, loving, fun and understanding parent to a wild little girl, through troubled teenager and into a young woman. He has been the one I could always reach out to when life was difficult and sucked. He never got mad when I screwed up, and he calmed me down when everything was happening all at once. When I was at boarding school, 
He drove 1.5 hours each way to a therapist to help with my mental health problems. But I've always secretly believed that those 3 hours of chill conversation with my dad every other week was the real key to my beginning recovery. He raised me on classic rock and heavy metal, which developed into a very long and severe emo phase, which gave me some of my oldest friends, my favorite nostalgic angsty teenage music, and my first sense of self-style. He took me to my first concert, my first festival and was with me the first time I saw my favorite band. He bought me my first beer and pretended he didn't see when I got my first kiss. He has fixed countless computers, assembled countless IKEA drawers with me, taught me to play video games and made me amazing spaghetti bolognese at least once a week since I was old enough to hold a fork, and since age 13. Amazing vegetarian bolognese. No sweat. My patient's empathy with other people. My immaculate, if I might say so, sense of humor, my adventuresome nature, my 5 feet 10 giant viking valkyrie frame and my handiness is all dad jeans, and those are some of my favorite traits about myself, I look a lot like him too, or his sister's mother, at least, thanks for the face, dad, it's hella cute, he gives the best hugs, and through almost 23 years, he is still the person who can make me ugly cry a laugh the hardest, this is so adorable. Because he's the most resilient, courageous and dedicated father I know, opened a 529 college savings account for me as soon as I was born, went to a great school without taking any loans, allowed me to do research and join a fraternity instead of working during undergrad, stayed in an abusive relationship with my mother for 20 years so that he could keep the family together, slept on a cot for 10 years, would never give up, until we told him it was okay to let go. Picks up the phone every time I call, no matter what he's doing. Always checks that I am okay. Never bothered him that I'd call during huge board meetings or conferences. Always answered. Ran a legal investigation on his bosses because a co-worker suspected insider trading. Spent 3 years during his divorce investigating his bosses and generally being hated by everyone in the company. He said that it was the ethical thing to do and he wouldn't be able to face his children if he didn't. Got fired for it after the investigation ended. Spent his entire adult life earning money for me and my siblings. Paid child support plus extra to my mother. Now is finally pursuing his dream of stand up comedy. Now that he feels certain that my siblings and I are in stable places in our lives. Coached all my soccer teams, played tennis with me every weekend in high school, watched hundreds of movies with me, showed me amazing music, gave me his prized records, a selfless, funny, and supportive person who makes friends wherever he goes, tells us that he makes the decision to be happy every day, and he is. What a great man. He is the biological father to my sister and my stepfather. Not once did I feel like he'd prefer her over me but always make me feel like he loves us equally and treated us equally. When I was depressed and suicidal, my dad left work early every day to take me to a coffee shop and talk. He is a big reason I'm still alive. My bio father was not a great guy. Got arrested for illegal firearms and drugs. Around the time he was arrested, my mom ended up fleeing from him when I was about 6 weeks old. My mom ended up in her hometown, remarried a couple years later. Her, now ex, husband stayed together until I was about 5. Even though they were only together for a couple of years, he treated me like a son my whole life. Even when my folks split, I went and visited him with my brother. He taught me a lot of valuable life skills and was there for me when I needed him. He had absolutely no obligation to take me in as a son, but he did. I love the heck out of him and I'm happy I get to call him dad. I miss my dad so much. He was one of my nest friends. I talked to him about almost whatever. He had a decent AMT of advice but even when he didn't, he seemed to always understand and never judge me for anything. When we were growing up, we were pretty broke and very happy. My dad values quality time so he would prioritize making memories with us. We would go on bike rides through the neighborhood at night, hike, play hide and seek in the dark, where my brother and I once hid in the laundry chute and had to be coaxed down, go on tourist nights on the strip. Growing up in Las Vegas had its fun moments. Ride roller coasters, go TP our friend's house with us, go walk around looking for bears in Yosemite, and all sorts of stuff like that. 
so many of my young memories had his smiling face in them. As an adult, I got stuck backpacking in Yosemite when my car broke down just outside the valley, and he called the gas station we were waiting at every 10 minutes until the tow truck arrived 4 hours later. Then he was preparing to drive 12 hours to come get me because I was broken out of range of car rentals. Thankfully something else worked out, but I'm always thankful for his efforts. One of the more memorable moments was when my brother got a really high score on asteroids, and my dad jokingly typed his own name on the record which, naturally, resulted in my brother in tears. My dad then stayed up into the wee hours of the morning playing asteroids to beat his score and put my brother's name on it. I got extremely lucky to have such a good dad. We became quite a bit closer than disowning each other like before. He learned to treat me better and cope with me and I grew up to be more tolerable too. We all improved on ourselves to be mire like what the other party deserves. We got closer. Not quite a bond but still better than before. As a grown butt man he learned to change and improve and to say sorry. And I did too. Might not seek like it's too much but this is the best thing for me about him. And it is a big thing for me given that what he was like quite some years ago. Because he kept believing in me at a time that it was clear to him and everyone else that I was going nowhere. And he kept showing love and compassion. Putting my needs before his and teaching me kindness until on his deathbed. Which was an extra big accomplishment because as a younger man he had had difficulties to control his temper. Now I have achieved a bunch of crap that he never got to see and even though I know he would have been overjoyed and very proud I believe in my heart of hearts he would have been even more proud if I, like him before me, had had the realization that accomplishments and possessions don't mean jack compared to kindness and compassion. Oh and also for teaching me that trying to impress people who don't care about you by striving to be the alpha male, the tough guy. The adventurer or the one-upper are stupid pursuits and your energy is better invested in doing what you love with the people who matter. It will be 9 years this month. Oh well, we move on. Because he's always stayed non-reactive and loving and tried his best, and never spoken poorly of my mom, his ex-wife, despite her decades of poor behavior and bad mouthing him. Also because he's a cool dude but humble enough that I had to find out about his adventurous youth from my, older, cousins. My dad was a drug addict who hit my mom a lot and was generally a piece of crap. He is now a recovering drug addict, 16 years clean last week, and is my example of it never being too late to turn your life around. He's now a truck driver and happily remarried. My father went from the biggest source of anxiety and fear in my life to the biggest source of comfort and my best friend. My very white, very republican dad taught me not to be a racist at dollar sign dollar sign at an early age. I was maybe 8 and our city had a black woman running for mayor. I had dinner at a friend's house the night before and their racist parents were going on and on about how they'd be damned before a black person was major of their city. The next day my dad was driving me to school and listening to talk radio. They were discussing the mayor election. I repeated exactly what my friend's parents had said before. My dad didn't yell, instead he pulled his Cherokee to the side of the road and asked me to get out. He had me sit on the curb and told me Mr. and Mrs. So and so might be damned before having a black mare, but I'll be damned before I have a racist daughter. Never, ever identify someone by the color of their skin. Identify them by their character, or even by the color of their shirt if you must, but never the color of their skin. We are all so much more than that, then we quietly got back in the car and drove to school. We didn't talk about the incident until decades later. I asked him why he made me get out of the car, and he said he realized right away this was a huge life lesson moment for me, and it would have a bigger impact if he made me get out of the car. I currently teach a class at a college that centers around the evolution of slavery in the United States. The class has a huge focus on racism and the evolution of racism as well. My job, and my acceptance of every race, is a direct result of that one conversation with my dad. P.S. That woman won her mayoral race, and is still thought of as one of the best mayors our city ever had. TFW you don't even have a mug. Guess I'm just the worst dad. My dad wasn't number one, he wasn't even close. But to me he was the only number one. So every day I would repaint his cup and let him know that number don't mean crap. I miss my dad so much. R.I.P. 
In 1987 we were at a Circle K and a man started shooting up the place. My dad shielded my mother and my toddler self from the gunfire. He lived and has some badass scars from the ordeal. He's the reason I was able to move to another country to be with the girl I love. I thought I would have a job by now but due to licensing issues I lost the job offer I had and it's taking way too long and I have a big test to study for now. Because he is still here. My dad has suffered a lot in life. Mental health woes and a lot of past demons that still torment him. PTSD from his time in the military. Abuse during his childhood of all types. And just a mountain of trauma. On numerous occasions when he has been in a bad spot. He has confided in me now that I'm an adult that he wants desperately to die but he refuses to put his family through something so torturous. So he endures. He suffers. But he draws strength from making his family happy. I think he has found the right balance of medication finally that he seems content. But, he may just be doing that to help us through our day to day while he suffers through his. It's heartbreaking. But he is here despite it all. And that makes him the very best dad in my eyes. My actual father doesn't, since he tried killing my mother, but her boyfriend of over a decade has a better chance at it, since he funded my living expenses through college and until I got on my feet, got me a working car, and all around is enjoyable to hang around with. He never wanted kids so he knew what came along with my mother in this case. My dad has been homeless multiple times due to struggling with debt. He has worked brutal factory jobs for my entire life while struggling with PTSD depression and child support, plus medical issues, and still he never left. He's stayed for me and my brother for 17 years now and he has done everything he possibly could for me with what little he has and he is a personal hero of mine for that. When I was in middle school and throughout high school, I was a really busy person. My dad held the belief that keeping me busy would keep me out of trouble, although I openly chose to do everything I was involved with. I was in bowling leagues, three varsity sports marching band, three different orchestras, robotics club, and private music lessons all throughout high school. In the 18 years of my childhood, my father drove me to and from every practice, offered to coach on sports teams, watched every rehearsal and practice, went to every concert, every ball game, every track meet, everything. He missed a little league baseball game one time and told me that he immediately regretted it and would never let himself do that again. I'm fortunate to have him as a father, and even more fortunate to tell him so. He knows that the only thing I ever want to be in life is to be as great of a father as he is to me. My dad's the best. Fight me over it. He did deserve it yesterday. He called me. We haven't spoken since Christmas and told me that everyone on his side would be shocked and devastated if I acted on my feelings. I've been suicidal for a while and my mom told him about it for my safety. We talked for over an hour about how I have family that would help me out there and that if I want I can't move out there. He also said he wants the best for me and he was an actual dad for once. My dad deserves it not just because he brought up me and my brother, but he raised his dead sister's children who live overseas and continues to be close with them now they are adults with kids. Even helped move my cousin to another state with her three kids when she got evicted. He's been woken many times by me and my brother at all hours to come pick us up. Looks after my mum with Alzheimer's. Cooks. Shops. Works six days a week. Hosts students for extra money. Built our extension on our house by himself. Lends me money. Helps my brother out with his new house. And most of all he puts up with me. His 21 year old daughter who still lives at home. I dunno he is a really caring and selfless person. He and my mom really support my dream of becoming an artist he would lose work days just to be with me and my siblings at our school events. He deserves it because of how much a freaking trooper he is. We haven't had the worst life, but seeing my dad continually go to a job he doesn't enjoy just to make sure his kids and wife are secure means so much to me. Growing up in a world where people always tell you to do what makes you happy, it's moving that he pushes that aside just to support us. What I really am most excited for is the day he gets to retire, because I just want him to have the same happiness he gave us. My father used to be an arrogant uneducated butthole who couldn't understand other people and got mad whenever he didn't understand something. But ever since my mother and I talked to him honestly about his behavior he felt really bad that he failed. So ever since that talk he has done everything in his power to understand my problems and his own. 
He's done a complete 180 in life and is now doing a great job and I couldn't be more proud of him. It's not easy for people to change especially when they are so deep into their previous mindset but in a short amount of time my dad was able to and I'm so happy for him. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.